I'm Carol Batchelor. I'm an artist, designer and educator based here in Melbourne, Australia. I currently have an exhibition of paintings on show at West End Art Space in West Melbourne. We are currently in the middle of uh, stage four lockdown because of COVID. Uh, we hung the show the day before the stage four announcement. So unfortunately, no one can visit the gallery. We can't open the gallery. And uh, to date, it remains an exhibition on the scene. Pretty bad timing uh, and it's a shame because seeing and experiencing paintings in the flesh is very different from viewing work online. There's many nuances that are not able to be experienced uh, within the paintings. So this is not an ideal situation. Definite Possibilities is the title of the show. It's a bit of an oxymoron, really. There's a slippage between two opposing ideas. On the one hand, you have something that is absolute and fixed. And on the other hand, something that's a maybe, just one possibility of many and unfixed. Um, this is the world we inhabit, that of uncertainty. So perhaps that is now more relevant than ever. I make abstract paintings that ruminate on the ambiguous, the unknown and the mysterious. My intention is not to show something that we recognise or know in a literal sense or even a physical place that we could visit. Uh, though I acknowledge that there are passages of familiarity. Um, they are intended to represent the undefinable. They're definitely indefinite. Sometimes happily, though at other times anxiously or even frighteningly, the work celebrates the space of doubt, that intangible mystery, contradictions and uncertainty. I love the smell of oil paint and gum terps, so that is my preferred medium. Though I guess like any artist, I um, draw, dabble in watercolours, collage, etc. in my experimental work. With the oil paint, I love how I can push and manipulate the paint over a period of time. Um, it has a really slow dry drying time and has an organic feel to it that I connect with as opposed to acrylic paint that is essentially plastic, I guess. Um, I paint onto linen and canvas, but lately I've also been especially enjoying painting onto timber panels as I'm sanding into that surface and building up and revealing um, the layers and the history of the painting over time with a really soft surface and I'm able to achieve this uh, soft patina. The paintings are made using improvisation as a working method. I never know where the paintings will end and I often think I wouldn't bother if I knew the outcome. I really paint to find out. I'm not painting what I already know. Uh, I often describe it as a bit like walking through an unfamiliar city without a map. You know, each mark or layer of the paint is in response to what came before. So there's um, an element of chance and I want to be open to that. So the end result is uh, a record of that history or dialogue that I've had with the painting. Many, many artists, um, Agnes Martin and Sean Scully come to mind uh, immediately. They are abstract painters, um, but really what they are painting are things that exist, but are just not visible in the way that we usually see things. Um, you know, there's this interest in that interior world of the psyche, the emotional and the spiritual, 
which is very broad and open to everyone, regardless of time, culture, place, etc. So in that sense, um, the work of modernist painters such as Rothko and many others are important to my practice. Um, also come, coming to mind is uh, a quote by contemporary American artist Richard Tuttle, and um, I'll paraphrase here, but he talks about um, the idea that the cre his job is um, the creation of possibility, but meaning is in the experience of the viewer. So um, that idea I feel is really aligned with what I'm trying to achieve. I want the work to be open for uh, the viewer to project their own meaning onto the work. So it's very non-prescriptive in that sense. I went to art school, I went to uh, RMIT here in Melbourne. I did a bachelor degree, followed up with a master's degree and I finished that in 2006. Um, having said that, art school is not somewhere where you go to learn techniques or how to paint like the old masters. Uh, it's a place where you want your mind uh, opened and your ideas challenged and at the same time make work and push yourself creatively. And bit by bit over time you develop a set of ways of communicating non-verbally and you build upon that. So it's not really a linear process, but one with many twists and turns that sustains you artistically and creatively indefinitely. Unfortunately, my studio is not located within my home um, because with stage four lockdown, that would mean I could continue working during the six week period. Um, it is, I do have a, a studio in uh, the northern suburbs of Melbourne in an industrial warehouse. Uh, so it's a big cavernous space that I share with another artist. And um, yeah, like I say, I really wish it was in, in my home. Um, it's a bit frustrating not being able to paint, uh, but you know, there are other ways of being creative, I guess. So it's, it's not an issue in that sense. Um, it's been interesting speaking with people during the lockdown and that idea of, um, you know, we, we now don't have a commute. So there's that lack of, of a period of time that becomes a transition between one frame of mind, uh, you know, now I'm at work, to home or wherever you're going. Um, so, you know, my studio is 20 to 30 minutes um, from my home and um, now I'm, I'm sort of bang work mode or home. And, and it's interesting, I think, to, to um, think about how the, this lockdown has affected us and, um, and how, how we experience transitions now. Is it Tuesday or is it the weekend? That distinction is more blurry now. Uh, I teach drawing to design students at RMIT and of course we're all online now and for the foreseeable future. So that root routine is still there and punctuates the days and that's something I'm, I'm really grateful for. Uh, I'm a big fan of discipline and um, that's that idea of a task will take as long as you've got you know if you've got six weeks to do something it'll take you six weeks and um, if you've got two you, you're going to get it done um, so like I was saying you know it's frustrating not to paint in the studio but um, I'm not one to get bored easily so um, there's always plenty to do at home such as unread books cooking um, beautiful food etc but I guess time is another one of those slippery and at times seemingly contradictory concepts. Um, you know, it's a construct that can change. It can slip by quickly or it can feel like an eternity. 
I think it's dependent upon relationships, your relationship with the people you're with and your environment. Um, that, that space that we inhabit, whether it's physical or in our mind. So I think 2020 has gotten a bad rap, um, but I feel we're all wishing it away. And um, what is this moment that we will not again get the chance to experience? Um, making art gives meaning and purpose to my life. It's everything really. To me, an artless world is one I'm not interested in. It really is a barren wasteland. I always think of Winston Churchill, and I'll paraphrase here uh, when he says, well, you know, what are we fighting for if not for the art? And perhaps that is misunderstood by many people as meaning uh, something that's unnecessary or superfluous or trivial and whether we're talking pretty pictures to hang on your wall fashion or a beautifully designed room it's all art at the end of the day and all, cu all cultures are more deeply understood through the art they produce um, engaging with that materiality of the world around them and and yes um, there is a hierarchy of needs, I guess, that depends, um, you know, especially apparent in, in wartime. So if, if we're destined to remain in a world without beauty, then, then we may be alive with food on the table and a roof over our heads, but all that is meaningless without some sort of connection to both the unconscious self and the collective unconscious.